I'm what you call a collector of bootleg Pokemon games, Pokemon Diamond and Jade, Chaos Black, etc. It's amazing the frequency with which you can find them at pawn shops, Goodwill, flea markets, and such. They're generally fun, even if they are unplayable, which they often are. The mistranslations and poor quality make them unintentionally humorous. I've been able to find most of the game, most of the ones that I've played online, but there's one that I haven't heard mention of. I thought it, I bought it at a flea market almost five years ago. Here's a picture of the cartridge in case anyone recognizes it. Unfortunately, when I moved two years ago, I lost the game, so I can't provide you with screen caps. Sorry. The game started out with the familiar Nidorino and Gengar intro of red and blue version. However, the press start screen had been altered. Red was there, but the Pokemon did not cycle through. It also said black version under the Pokemon logo. Upon selecting new game, the game started with the Professor Oak speech, and it quickly became evident that the game was Pokemon red version. After selecting your starter, if you looked at your Pokemon, you had addition to Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle. Another Pokemon. Ghost. The Pokemon was level 1. It had the sprite of the ghosts that are encountered in Lavender Town before obtaining the Silph Scope. It had one attack. Curse. I know that there's a real move called Curse, but the attack did not exist in Gen 1 so it appears it was hacked in. Defending Pokemon were, were unable to attack ghosts, it would only say that they were too scared to move. When the move Curse was used in battle, the screen would cut to black. The cry of the defending Pokemon would be heard, but it was distorted, played at a much lower pitch than normal. The battle screen would then reappear, and the defending Pokemon would be gone. If used in a battle against a trainer, when the Pokeballs would appear in the corner, they would have one fewer Pokeball. The implication was that the Pokemon died. What's even stranger is that also after defeating a trainer and seeing Red has received $200 for winning, the battle would end as it normally does. You could also select Curse. If he did, upon returning to the overworld, the trainer's sprite would be gone. After leaving the area and re-entering the area, the spot where the trainer had been would be replaced with a tombstone, like the ones at Lavender Town. The move Curse was not usable in all instances. It would fail against ghost Pokemon. It would also fail against trainers that you would have to you face again, such as your rival or Giovanni. It was usable in your final battle against them, however. I figured that this was the gimmick of the game, allowing you to use the previously incapturable ghosts, and because Curse made the game so easy, I essentially used it throughout the whole adventure. The game changed quite a bit after defeating the Elite Four. After viewing the Hall of Fame, which consisted of Ghost and a couple of very underleveled Pokemon, the screen cut to black. A box appeared with the words, Many Years Later. It then cut to Lavender Down. An old man was standing, looking at tombstones. You then realized this man was your character. The man moved at only half of your normal walking speed. You no longer had any Pokemon with you, not even Ghost, who up to this point had been impossible to remove from your party through depositing it in the PC. The overworld was entirely empty. There were no people at all. There were still the tombstones of the trainers that you used Curse on, however, You could pretty much go anywhere in the overworld at this point, though. 
your movement, though your movement was limited by the fact that you had no Pokemon to use HMs. And regardless of where you went, the music of Lavender Town continued on an infinite loop. After wandering for a while, I found that if you go through Diglett Cave, one of the colorful bushes that normally blocks the path on the other side is no longer there, allowing you to return to Pallet Town. Upon entering your house and going to this exact spot where you start the game, the screen would cut to black. Then a sprite of a canopy appeared. It was replaced by a Weedle, and then a Pidgey. I soon realized, as the Pokemon progressed through Rattata to Blastoise, that these were the Pokemon I used to curse on. After the end of my rival's team, a youngster appeared, and then a bug catcher. These were the trainers that I had cursed. Throughout the sequence, the Labyrinth Town music was playing, but it was slowly decreasing in pitch. By the time your rival appeared on screen, it was a little more than a demonic rumble. Another cut to black. A few moments later, the bow screen appeared suddenly. Your trainer's sprite was now that of an old man, the same one that teaches you how to catch Pokemon in Viridian City. Ghost appeared on the side, along with the words, Ghost, Must, Wants to Fight. You could use item. you couldn't use items, you had no Pokemon. If you tried to run, you couldn't escape. The option, the only option was fight. Using fight would immediately cause you to use struggle, which didn't affect ghosts at all, but did chip off a bit of your own health. When it was a ghost's turn to attack, it would simply say dot dot dot. Eventually, when your own HP was at a critical point. Ghost would finally use Curse. The screen cut to black. A final time. I played through this hack game many, many times, and every time, the game ended with this sequence. Several times I didn't even use Ghost at all. Though it was impossible to remove from your party. In these cases, it did not show any Pokemon or trainers, and it simply cut to the cinematic battle with Ghost. I'm not sure what the motives were behind the creator of this hack. It wasn't widely distributed, so it wasn't it was presumably not for a monetary gain. It was very well done for a bootleg. It seems he was trying to convey a message, though it seems I am the sole receiver of this message. I'm not entirely sure what it was, the inevitability of death, the pointlessness of it, perhaps he was simply trying to morbidly inject death and darkness into a children's game. Regardless, this children's game has made me think and has made me cry.